boom what is up guys welcome back to another video and welcome to another devotional on the youtube channel number 43 i believe if my math is correct so thank you all for tuning in and i'm excited for what the lord has in store for us this week we have a very practical thought very simple nothing too out of the ordinary or too intricate or detailed but nevertheless i think it's a very simple thought that we do need to take out and apply to our everyday lives because I see a problem and I see an issue arising amongst various groups of Christians today as a result of not doing what we're going to talk about. And so if you have the Word of God, it's going to be in two passages today, an Old Testament and a New Testament. The New Testament one will be where we end up landing for most of our time. But Psalms, chapter number 119, the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119, 105 is going to be our main focus in the Old Testament, at least. And then going over to 2 Timothy 3, where we'll park it and kind of stay for the reminder of our time. Psalm 119, 105. Before I read, I would just also like to note, prayer requests are the first link down in the description below. Drop a prayer request. Go check those out. Um, and comment on the video, you know, anything you might want to share, any burdens. Um, whatever that looks like for you, you have the liberty to do it. And so just first link in the description below, prayer requests, any video ideas, you can drop those in the comments as well. Psalm 119, 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We'll hold, I'll hold my thoughts here as we flip over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to read this short little section and then kind of tie both of these passages together because they certainly have a lot in common. 2 Timothy chapter number 3, I'm going to be in verses 10 to 17, but verse 16 is where we're going to spend most of our time. 2 Timothy 3.10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me in Antioch, and Iconium and Lystra, which persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Here we find the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy, who is one of the leaders at the church at Ephesus. And this church is not in a good situation. You go back and read the whole book of First Timothy. You come here and read Second Timothy. And this church at Ephesus is not in a good place at all. They're struggling with false doctrine. They don't know what the truth is. People are promoting false things um, from the pulpit on a Sunday basis, every Sunday, every week. The church members are going out of the community and spreading false things about the truth and false things about their church and the leaders inside that church. And so it's a rough scenario. Be at Paul, old, he's wise. He's at the end of his life while he's writing these being chained up in prison in Rome at this point for being persecuted for his faith in Jesus Christ and his preaching. But he's writing this letter to Timothy. So Timothy, the leader at this church, can kind of get this church situated back on the right track and kind of get back where they should be and striving towards true doctrine and not teaching the false truth. If we were to look back on some of their personal church issues, we'll see complete misinterpretations of the faith. They've been teaching, you know, that marriage is bad and that um, eating meat is bad. We've seen, if you look back in 1 Timothy, quarrels between the men in the church where they fight and they're aggressive and they get in disputes almost weekly, but they also have a problem with alcohol and polluting the church with alcoholism. The women, they're not off the hook with this either. They come into the church each week and they're trying to treat church almost like it's the Met Gala, like it's a fashion. So these women are coming in. They're trying to dress, outdress one another. Who can dress the best? Who can get the most compliments on their outfits each week? This church was a complete 
an utter mess. It was not a Bible-believing, God-fearing church. They're not teaching Christianity or faith as we see it today. But yet, in both passages so far, we find such a strong emphasis on the Word. And not just the Word. Obviously, verse 16 is wonderful, and it's I think most Christians, or at least most saints of the faith, would... Um, like have this verse memorized and they would have it in the back of their minds quite often. But I think verse 16 is the perfect encapsulation. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. My little heading of this section actually says that all scripture is inspired. So yes, Paul is telling Timothy that all scripture is perfect. It's holy. It's God breathed line upon line, precept upon precept. We are supposed to follow the word and what it says. We can't just pick and choose what we live by and what we don't live by. But even as we go back to Psalm 119, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We should live by the word of God. And you're like, Trevor, what in the world? This is, you know, what's where's the substance of this? Where's the depth? Where's the, <coughs> excuse me, where's just the intricacies of this thought? I know I'm supposed to live by the word. I know the word of God is holy. I know the word of God is perfect. I know I'm supposed to, supposed to follow what it says. Like where, what, where's the more to it? Like there's got to be something else. Well, as I told you, the thought is simple because even with this thought being so simple and even with such a basic devotional thought or even scriptures that we find today so clear and so straightforward, so many Christians struggle to abide by this. I don't have any numbers. I don't have any percentages to offer you anything mathematically. But I would be willing to say at least that a majority of believers today, and it kind of varies, I guess, from age group to age group, but certainly I'd be almost willing to bet that less than 50% of Christians today would affirm that they do not read their Bible every single day or they don't pick it up multiple times a week or anything like that, spend an extensive amount of time in the Word. Actually, don't take my word for it. Live on the devotional, we're going to look it up um, and just see what it says because I think it's important um, to see what kind of a mess we're in as believers. Okay, take my word for it. This is um, statusa.com. You can go back this up. You can do your own research after this devotional. But this says... A survey from 2021 found that 11% of Americans read the Bible daily. Trends in reading habits over four years show that the majority of Americans never read the Bible. However, in 2021, this number dropped to 29% of respondents. I've seen, I mean, this is, yeah, obviously you're going to get varying, um, varying numbers from varying people. That's just how research and statistics work. I don't want to get hung up on this. I do want to stay with the Word of God for a Word of God devotional and a thought. But I, you, you see my point. Very few Christians, especially if we're looking from 0 to 100%, actually read the Word daily. But yet in Scripture, we're commanded, and we are told very clearly in Psalm 119, the Word should be a lamp to our feet and a light into our path. That means that as we go around this dark world and as we're living in such darkness and muck day in and day out, that we ought to be following the Word getting in it, studying it, absorbing it, and letting it kind of guide our lives every single day. The amount of Christians, the amount of believers that I've seen or that I've talked to that are biblically illiterate and that are getting ready to graduate college or that are getting ready to raise a family or they maybe even are raising a family, it's, con it's concerning and it's scary because we need to know the word and we need to live by it. And I'm not saying that, you know, you read the word daily and your life's going to be happy, go lucky. It's going to be merry-go-rounds, you know, unicorns and rainbows and puppies. That's not what I'm saying. But I do think many of us believers, we put ourselves in unnecessary struggles. We don't recognize the voice of God like we could be. We don't hear him speaking to us. And we just feel like we're kind of off in la-la land, living this life, suffering and struggling alone. When in reality, we haven't opened our Bible in weeks or even months or even years if you want to go that far, we're not regularly spending time in the word. And so we're not allowing God to speak to us through his word. We're not understanding the scriptures. No, we're not reading and learning like we're taught to be. 
but yet we're expecting the voice of God to be almost like on a microphone speaking directly in our ear. We're expecting to go down the highway and see a billboard um, of God telling us what his will for our life ought to be. And we're expecting everything in our life just to be perfectly fine and had to have peace in the, you know, in the face of the storm whenever we're never in the word and we're never actually absorbing it and understanding it. And second Timothy and what we just looked at with Psalm 119, it's understanding that yes, there's gonna be persecution when it comes to following Christ. Second Timothy 3.12, yea, and all the will of godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yes, we see in verse 16, it is all inspired by God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. But it is also a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And there's something to be said of value about following the word and being a student of it daily. And we've already looked at, I believe, a similar thought in a previous devotional, talking about how's your habits and talking about the importance of being biblically grounded with the spiritual disciplines. But this kind of ties into that and just takes it a step further. Of, yeah, it's not going to be easy to get in the word daily. The enemy's going to try to send you warfare, but you can do it. If you simply remain dedicated, you set aside time for you and God, um, your quiet time where you pray and you read his word, and you lean on him to give you the strength and the sustenance to be able to do that for long periods of time and to be able to do that consistently because it's important and it matters. And we need to be in the word. I think a lot of anguish and messes we get ourselves in on a daily basis could maybe be corrected or at least altered to make it a little bit better if we simply just found ourselves in the word day in and day out because the more we're in the word the harder it becomes to sin throughout the day the harder it becomes to abstain from gospel-centered conversations the harder it becomes to um, let anxiety and stress and depression wreck your life if you just stay in this book I think a lot of things and a lot of inconveniences in our day-to-day -day would simply be, I'm not saying made perfect, I'm not saying our lives would be perfect without struggle or trial, but I do think they would be um, lessened, or at least you could get through them better, or with more of a mindset, like you could walk through this life and do life well um, by staying grounded in the Word day in and day out. And so, that's kind of the thought, that's really all I have, very practical but it's needed in this day and age. We as Christians need to get back into this book, need to start teaching the book, need to start reading the book, need to start telling other people about the book and bringing people into church. We've got a lot to work to be done, but it starts here with us and the Lord in our quiet time and with the word of God. But I'm going to pray this out and that's going to be all. So let's pray. Dear Lord, God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you above all for your word. God, your holy scriptures that are God-breathed, that are inspired, that are holy, that are just. Lord, we thank you for them, that God, we can read them and study them daily and just hear from you. And I just pray, God, that you'd help us, help myself and help everybody else that's watching this to stay more rooted in the word. God, to develop that consistent routine in the word. God, to live by it so that Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path that it would guide us and that it would illuminate our paths, Lord, as we walk about this ever-growing sinful world and ever-darkening world. God, I pray that you just help us to do that and give us the strength and courage and boldness to do it and to go tell us other, others about it. God, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love for us. And we thank you for your son, Jesus, and what he did for us on the cross. And it's in Christ that we pray. Amen. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Prayer requests. Drop a video idea if you have anything in the comments. And subscribe. I already said that twice. My apologies. But I'll see y'all on Thursday. God bless.